Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Rule the Waves 3. So I'm needing to record post commentary for this video because I screwed up my recording setup, um, chose the wrong profile in OBS, and so the audio track that my microphone is on was not recorded because I accidentally chose the one audio track recording option. And uh, my microphone audio is always on audio track too, just as a force of habit. So, yep. Oh, whoopsie daisy. So, I'm just kind of gonna talk here for a bit about stuff that's going on screen, I guess. And uh, hopefully it's not the worst ever. Because I can't really go back and re-record this video. Uh, for a variety of reasons, one of which is that I already recorded the next part. The other one is that I don't back up my saves for this series, and so it's not like I can just go back and load an older save or anything like that, like I could with a lot of other types of games. So yeah, that's my bad. So we are currently still in a war against France. France came back for round two last part, I believe it was. If memory serves me correctly, it has been a while since I recorded uh, in the case of this part before, so I don't fully recall what was going on, but I believe part 12 was when France came back for round two. We gave them a good old beating, but uh, it could have been better, partly because of some issues that I have with the game's mechanics, uh, particularly when it comes to invasions. Uh, when I played the beta, I didn't notice any issues, but I didn't really operate too much in Southeast Asia, so I don't know if it, it might just be something that's unique to, you know, the Asia region in particular. Um, but I, I had some... For this series, I'm having some major complaints about the pathfinding when you do invasions, which is just causing me tons of issues. Um, I think at this point, I was sort of speaking about, you know, ideas for alliances to maybe help us because the U.S. is presumably getting involved in the nearish future. Um, and potentially Britain might choose to join in, not because they're an ally of... France. Um, I'm pretty sure their alliance is already broken. I don't recall from the screen because I wasn't really looking at it now. Um, but our attentions are kind of high with them. And I don't really feel like fighting the British right now, but if we went to war with the British, um, we would eventually, um, so long as Italy holds out long enough, end up with an alliance with Italy at some point, um, which would potentially open up doors for other alliances. If I recall correctly, I think Italy was allied with Russia, so we would potentially get another alliance with Russia again, who has generally been a useful ally of ours in the past. Uh, somewhat surprisingly, uh, we continue to run into these errors of cannot find a ship file. I'm not quite sure what the deal is there. Those are not the errors that typically show up um, with, you know, additional details basically saying, hey... You haven't, uh, you know, this can happen because you close the game without saving. Um, although I do get those errors, I believe, as well sometimes. And I don't know why, because when it comes to the actual save that I'm using for recordings, I don't do that. So I don't know what the hell's going on there. Uh, we get a quick little battle here against France. I have both of our ancient, ancient battle cruisers, which are shitty designs in my opinion but it's what we got uh versus a i'm pretty sure it's just this heavy cruiser from france um and i think we're trying to figure out some stuff about their tech capabilities and then i see this weird thing where it says 13 inch old i don't know what the hell that means because i've never seen that before um and i noticed that a few other people have similar things and i think we do as well i think eventually i look at ourselves, and yeah we got it for seven and 13 inch guns i don't know what the hell it means um i don't believe it means that you have negative two quality guns because i'm pretty sure our seven inch guns are not negative two quality so i i don't know what it is but uh yeah i don't believe the manual mentions what it is because i don't think it was in the game before i literally never recall seeing it before it's as if it got potentially added in a patch and i don't know what it means so we just kind of you know bear down on this lonely french heavy cruiser and just try to destroy it as quickly as possible so we got the kako over there and then we got like i said our battle cruisers the sukuba and the karama over on the other side Trying to get the Kako to sort of force it to close in on our battle cruisers, preferably. Um, 
just because they're better equipped just because of the better guns well the bigger guns maybe not necessarily better but they are bigger and i think i also sort of gripe about the design for the kako because i'm not a fan of the class design um i really don't like one four and two aft turret configurations but it's an older design so it's just because of research um how we ended up researching stuff that's kind of how things panned out but not i'm really not a fan of the design but the ship you know it does its job fine you know it gets the job done um but i, I think the reason why i was trying to get it to close with the battle cruisers was just because they're more likely to be able to damage it so it can't speed away because i believe it is faster than both of our ship classes that are well it's faster than our, our our heavy cruiser and their or and our battle cruisers, I believe. So, yeah. But luckily, I I think we might have managed to hit the engine room or something at some point. Um, I don't know who hit it. I really wasn't paying attention with this because it wasn't that interesting of a battle, honestly. Uh, but there we go. So, quick little battle of Java C. Beat the crap out of the French. I think for the most part, honestly, this is not a particularly uh, battle heavy part generally speaking because the french don't have much in the way of basing capabilities um in southeast asia um the u.s has now officially joined in uh, but the u.s isn't really going to do much either just spoiler alert um that's us trying to get some new airplane designs and uh, we didn't pick one because they are all worse than our current ones when it came to things like range which are kind of important to us we're trying to finish kicking out the French in Southeast Asia, so we try to finish off taking their uh, Vietnam holdings. or Well, yeah, their Vietnamese holdings, rather, I guess is a better way to say it. Um, but also trying to avoid breaking the bank because we don't have positive monthly balance and we don't have tons of money in the bank either. Um, now with the U.S. joining in, we're sort of reevaluating the situation when it comes to war. Because they aren't allied with Germany, so Germany could eventually join in. But then we see that France and Germany have the same level of tensions as I do with Germany. And so my hope was that at some point, Germany and France would get pissed off enough of each other and go to war. And thus, I wouldn't have to fight Germany. Not that Germany is a threat to us, but nonetheless, if I can avoid fighting them, that's great. Because I really don't want to. With the French unable to contest us, we proceed to go ahead and invade, um, what was that? Um, Chochen, China, I think that one was? No. Chochen, China is the one further south. Whatever the one to the north was. I don't recall. I wasn't paying attention to what it was called. While well, going back and recording this, but nonetheless, with them unable to contest us, we proceed to go ahead and invade that real quick. And then we... I don't know what the hell I'm talking about here. I think we're talking about, you know trying to balance the budget and you know the fact that i should maybe theoretically send some ships to the indian ocean because you know just to make sure that they don't invade uh, burma though technically they can't but i think the ai sometimes feels like it plays by its own rules so even though they don't have the invasion range if they have a large enough fleet there i think the game will still sometimes just let them invade because why not i don't get the logic there but i swear it happens uh, luckily, that doesn't seem to be the case here, at least. Uh, the French proceed to now magically poof into existence, large fleet, and they say we don't actually feel like fighting you. Okay, then. That's fine with me. I'd rather not fight you, I just want to take your shit, and we can move on and be friends again. And by friends, I mean you can leave me the hell alone. Is my thought process. Because even though I don't like the French... Uh, in this campaign because of issues from my own campaign. Pretty sure, again, they are from my own campaign. I still don't like the French. And I will continue to want to shit on the French in this series, and maybe future series as well, uh, given the opportunity. But there we go. Okay, they still have a sizable fleet here, so we get another quick little battle. We got the uh, the Akashi, the Sukuba, the Kurama, and for whatever reason, the Fumakuzi, or, excuse me, Fumizuki is uh, just way in the back for no reason, as far as I can tell. 
Um, the Akshi is an ancient, ancient light cruiser. It does not go very fast. We uh, would love to get rid of it if given the opportunity, but we just kind of can't. So this is a quick little coastal raid. We've got to destroy two ships of at least uh, 500 tons, if I recall correctly. So, you know, small transports qualify because they're like 900 tons. So we just kind of sail for the red dot because that's an obvious place to go to. It's also the center of the uh, region in which uh, the game calculates if a sunk ship qualifies as applying. Now, this battle ends up actually being a fairly interesting one. Because the French actually do have a decent fleet. In fact, I'd in many ways say that it is a significantly better fleet than ours. It's also a larger fleet, I would say, personally. Uh, I'm not going to spoil that. Uh, it should pop up too long into the future. Um, but overall, I think for how things were going, this battle went much better than I would have anticipated when I first got into it. Or rather, when we first spotted the enemy uh, fleet. Or rather, defensive forces, I guess we can call them instead. So, yeah, we just kind of keep on sailing down. And I don't know what it is with the Fumizuki. It just seems like it doesn't want to speed up. For some reason, it's hanging out at 18 knots, even though it's supposed to be trying to catch up to a fleet that's going at 27 knots. Like, I mean, I can understand if it's an older design, it might not have the speed to actually catch up, but it should still be attempting it, in theory. And that was me uh, just sort of double checking if, uh, you know, what the uh, ship size requirements were to qualify. As soon as we start engaging the uh, small transport, we spot the enemy defensive forces, and oh shit, they got two battle cruisers. Uh, we got the old Dunkirk, which is a very similar design to ours. I believe it is slightly smaller, um, but slightly slower as well, and less the same. It, it is an eerily similar design, honestly. And I think I'm just sort of looking at it like, what, what, what's, what's going on with this design? Because it's just, it's shocking to me how similar it is. And it's, it's not like I looked at the French ships and said, I want that when I designed the, uh, the whatever ship class the Sukuba and Karamas are, I don't actually recall if they're Sukuba. Are they Sukuba class or are they Karama classes? I know we only built the two of them because we were freaking poor. Um, but then we also spot okay, there's another battle cruiser in there. It's also not the same as the Dunkirk, it's the Nantes class, much newer design with 16 inch guns. Oh my god, those are gonna hurt. But I think it's also very fast at 29 knots. Like, holy crap. I mean, it's a battle cruiser. It makes sense. But I eh, don't really feel like messing with that thing. It's also quite a bit heavier than our designs at 35,000 tons. I believe ours were 24 or something like that. Thousand. It's got a fair bit of armor. Also has some heavy A factor. Not that that really matters. But it has it nonetheless. It's something to mention. So it's... Now, granted, at this point, I'm sort of like, I don't think this is the right era for 16-inch guns. Because I don't think anybody really has good quality 16-inch guns. While they have better quality 14-inch guns. Was uh, sort of my thought process at one point. Um, that does somewhat change after this battle when I decide to reevaluate the situation when it comes to designing a ship. Um, but yeah, so they've got, you know, two battle cruisers, 
four destroyers with it. They got a CL back there with a couple of destroyers with it as well. And, you know, again, the fact of the matter is that Nantes is a very, very dangerous ship, potentially. And it outranges us by a fair bit. So we're just kind of stuck trying to figure it out. And I think at this point I'm trying to figure out how close do I have to get to be able to pin the belt? And, okay, I'd have to close to, like, 4,000 yards, something like that, to be able to pin the belt. Um, based off of our technology when it comes to armor strength and armor penetration, it's possible the French have worse armor strength than we do. And so those values change. We're, we're using our technology. It's also possible they have better armor strength than us, and thus we would have to get even closer to be able to do it. So we're just trying to maximize the amount of guns we have on target while also trying to provide as small of a, you know, silhouette for them to fire on. Because we would love to sink both the battle cruisers, given the opportunity. Uh, but, yeah, again, that Nantes is dangerous. The Dunkirk, I don't mind. I, I can take the Dunkirk without too much of an issue, but not too big on trying to fight that Nantes. Really not. And it doesn't help that this Kuba is just constantly having issues with its guns. I mean, hell, they somehow managed to jam a gun that is not even turning to face the target because it doesn't have a firing angle. That's because this was designed before we got cross-deck fire, and you cannot go back and add cross-deck fire, which is a, something I think I mentioned when I was originally trying to record this, and then, you know, a microphone audio wasn't recorded. That I find silly. I mean, it should probably have an extended period of refit period because the idea would be that you'd have to rejig the superstructure to enable it. But I still think you should be able to. I think you should be able to add cross deck fire after the fact, but just give it like a 12 month refit. The idea being that you have to rejig the superstructure. So you have to literally cut bits of it out and say, well, this is a fairly important part of the ship, so we got to move it somewhere else now. You know, whatever the hell it is, it's a hallway that leads somewhere important, or, you know, you can just leave it open. Maybe don't move it because it's just a hallway, so it's not super important, but nonetheless, you still got to cut up part of the ship's superstructure. At this point, some of our destroyers are very close, so we think, okay, great. Maybe we can sneak in there, pop smoke, and uh, get some good torpedoes off, preferably on the Nantes, because it's the one that's closest to us at this time. Dunkirk is off on its own, fleeing away, which is uh, what the Zakuba and Karama are trying to hunt down. And so we just try to, you know, do a good old-fashioned torpedo run. Uh, doesn't quite work out as we like, so we back off. They turn south as if to give chase for some reason, so we try to take advantage of that in hopes that uh, we can close the distance fast enough and get a good torpedo in now as a result of that. So the Shiokaze launches some, they miss. Shiokaze is out of torpedoes. We try again. The Harukazo fires and lands one hit. Could be better, but hey, you landed a hit, fires another salvo, and both hit this time. I would try to back our destroyers out, you know. If we can avoid losing them, that'd be nice. Uh, is it important? Not really. I'll survive. But I would like for them to not sink if possible, because we don't have that many ships. We didn't exactly have much, in, uh, much time to really try to rebuild. Uh, previously, so trying to avoid losing ships as much as possible while inflicting as much damage on the French as we can. So we uh, we managed to land three torpedoes on the Nantes, which are yeah, it's hurting, um, but it's still going. It's not dead in the water just yet, and as far as I'm concerned, if you're not dead in the water, you are still alive. It's only once you're dead in the water that I consider you sunk. 
for the simple reason that generally ships don't recover once they're dead in the water. That's just the reality of this game. When your ship is dead in the water, you're usually not recovering. The only, ex you know, there's some exceptions to this, of course. Sometimes you do, you get lucky. Um, other times, you know, when it's a case of you rammed into an enemy ship, okay, yeah, you'll be dead in the water for a bit, but you're not dead. But if you've been torpedoed or shot at a whole bunch and you're dead in the water, no, you're generally not recovering. And again, the Nantes is the bigger threat as far as I'm concerned, so we try to get another torpedo run in on it. Uh, the Minazuki takes a whopping of a hit, uh, lands two more torpedoes on the Nantes, and it is now dead in the water. We try to get it to back out to safety, if possible, tell it to return to base, but I don't bother really taking control of it. I just kind of let it do its own thing to figure out how to get back to base. The Mochizuki attempts to get another torpedo run in on the Dun... Well, not another, but attempts to get a torpedo run in on the Dunkirk, but unfortunately, those all just kind of scrape on by it. Um, you know, either they go too deep or, you know, whatever the case is, they plink into the hull, but they don't detonate and just continue on their way afterwards. I don't know. Whatever it is, Dunkirk doesn't get torpedoed, unfortunately. But that's fine. The Nantes is dead in the water. We can send the battle cruisers in to try to finish off the Dunkirk. The Akashi just kind of sails around because it doesn't really have anything it can do. It's too slow to catch up to anything except for stuff that's dead in the water. So we're just kind of relying on the uh, battle cruisers to get the Dunkirk to stop moving. At which point we can consider it a job well done. Because, like I said, it's not recovering, generally speaking. Now, we figure, you know, at this point it's more or less dead in the water. We don't need to focus on it too much. So I try to get my guys to start focusing on sinking the destroyers. And, okay, we just get the two things for destroying two enemy ships that are 500 tons or more. Best guess is the small transport that we were firing at earlier sunk uh, it did not successfully make it into port and then you know one of the destroyers sunk and you know therefore we technically made it um we could leave at this point if we wanted to uh, but i want to make sure that both the battle cruisers sink it's that important to me that both of them sink, and now Dunkirk is dead in the water, so we tell our battle cruisers to straight up hold fire. I don't want them firing at all, unless it's on the uh, light cruiser over here. Now, annoyingly, manual targeting, you would think, would basically tell them to fire at your target that you have specifically told them to fire at. It doesn't seem to quite work that way, um, at least not, you know, fully. They still seem to have some autonomy when it comes to firing on targets, but it does maybe prioritize. I'm really not sure exactly how manual targeting works. Um, I don't think it's mentioned at all in the manual, and it's just... It's, you say manual targeting, but again, it seems like it might be more of a target priority box more than anything else. So destroyers continue attempting to just get out of dodge if possible, and then I realize, oh wait, I'm sending some of you to the wrong uh, port because there's no port at uh, Thanhoa or however it's pronounced. Um, you need to go further north to uh, what is that, Haiphong or something like that? Uh, yeah, Haiphong to uh, you know actually get. Uh, into a port because annoyingly the Chinese took fucking Hainan from us earlier when they had a revolution. I'm still pissed about that and I'm still trying to go to war with China, but the game refuses to let me. Pretty sure I literally mentioned that almost word for word at this exact moment in time. Uh, or rather, you know, just a couple of moments before. So, yep, that's a annoying thing we have to deal with. But we continue on. 
as if nothing happened. Focus on trying to destroy that light cruiser because it's the only major ship that they have left. But unfortunately, I don't think we really get lucky at that. Um, and some of our destroyers that are just too heavily damaged, you know, unsurprisingly, they don't make it back. Part of our issue, though, with sinking that cruiser is that it's faster than us. And at this point, I just decide, no, you're not catching up to it. So we're done. We've sunk both battle cruisers. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's more than enough. We go ahead and pick up some survivors, because why not? We can humiliate the French. You know, you got sunk by an Asian Navy. How does that make you feel, France? You know, you've been trying to look down on us, and we beat the crap out of you. Twice. Once when you had Britain helping you. And now you got the U.S. trying to help you. But, spoiler alert, the U.S. doesn't do anything. The U.S. doesn't get involved. Like, at all. We literally never once encounter an American ship during this war. They just, for some reason, never decide to come and help their French allies. I think they join just as a show of support more than anything else. Uh, we run into an issue of one of our destroyers is apparently deciding to defect or something because it's literally sailing into the French port for some reason. So there we go. This is a... They got destroyed. We literally lost just a destroyer, but they lost two battlecruisers and a destroyer and a small transport, but small transport doesn't matter that much. And so I think at this point, I'm, I'm sort of like, okay, I need to take a look at this, see, you know, what happened to their their stuff. So we look at the Nantes, and um, yeah, it took a fair few hits early on, in fact, to the engine room, which helped us immensely because good luck trying to catch up to it. This is a fairly fast ship. But getting it to slow down made it easier to get a torpedo run in later down the road. And, you know, I think I'm talking about how, you know, a lot of these shots that are, you know, did that were engine room hits didn't actually penetrate. Penetration is noted by the asterisk next to stuff, but most of those engine room hits don't have an asterisk, so they didn't actually penetrate the the belt armor or you know whatever part of the ship it is that they would have had to have gone through to hit the engine room. They just kind of, I guess, put a dent in it. And that caused maybe damage to the machinery or something. And engine room uh, it started encountering issues. Or rather, you know, the engine started encountering issues. So I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. And we see here, you know, they got negative one quality 16 inch guns. Not actually that bad. Surprisingly, for some reason, I would have expected worse, but yeah, you know, you got your quality zero 12 inch guns now on the older stuff. That's a lot of VP for us from that one engagement. They surprisingly get a fair bit of their own. And uh, there we go. We took a nom or however it's pronounced. We continue to look at this and oh shit, the uh. The Germans and the French are getting along now because I'm at war with uh, the U.S. And now I look at them and say, okay, you know what? We should design our own brand new next generation dreadnought with 16-inch guns because as it turns out, they are probably not the worst. So we start trying to look into it. Okay, 40,000 tons, the largest we can build right now. I would love to have more guns. I don't care to have an aft center line because it's just not my thing. So we get rid of that. Don't need it. Does not benefit us at all. So, okay, now we figure out how to make this work. And I think at this point I figure out, wait, they increased the amount, the, uh, Max number of uh, rounds you can give secondaries to 500 rounds per gun. It used to be 250 per gun. 
I still use 250 per gun because it's generally more than sufficient for my needs. For some reason, the game tries to give us three aircraft. And we realize, oh wait, we haven't researched catapults yet, so I'm going to have to forgo that for now. We can add it on after the fact, once I eventually invent it. Okay, slap unit machinery because that's important. I want to have backups and box magazine for weight savings. And we're like, okay, uh, or let's do 100 rounds per gun on the main guns and let's try to triple gun all this stuff. And game says, oh, nope, all too narrow. You can't do that. You know, gotta, would have to remove our torpedo protection to be able to do that. So, okay, fine. The A and Ys can be dual turrets instead of triples, and that, that allows that to work. Cut down on amount of armor on the secondary guns. Don't really care for more than two on those, honestly. Doesn't really benefit us at all to have more. We still don't have uh, dual-purpose 5-inch guns, which is annoying. Someday we'll get that. And I'm trying to think of the future because, you know, we are in the aviation age. It's early days. It's not a particularly large threat, but it is a thing we have to worry about nonetheless. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, how can I improve our protection? And I figure these are designs that are probably going to be here for a while. So, okay. Uh, four and a half inches of deck armor was... I believe in Rule the Waves 2, considered generally sufficient for um, protecting against most uh, dive bomb attacks. Okay, let's increase the rounds per gun on the tertiary dual purpose to 250, and that leaves us with a fair bit of weight savings still. I think I'm griping about not having dual dual purpose, or, you know, Dual turret, dual purpose guns for four inch guns. And I'm like, okay, can I make this faster? What are other people's speeds for their uh, dreadnoughts and battle cruisers? And we see, okay, it looks like about 28 knots or so for a lot of them according to our intel, so okay, you know, let's try to get 28 knots out of this thing. Maybe 29 so we can be faster than them if possible. And then I run into the issue of, oh, well, game wants to make this a battle cruiser now, but I don't want it to be a battle cruiser. I want it to be a dreadnought. I'm trying to figure out, what do I need to do again to, you know, get that to work? Oh yes, add more armor. There's a certain point where the game says, okay, no longer allowed to qualify as a battle cruiser because of the amount of belt armor. Now I need to try to figure out a way to get weight savings. So, 13 inch belt, 12 inch turrets, 29 knot speed. This way we're a bit faster than them, you know, than the competition. And we slap some light AA guns, which uh, for Japan are what? God, I don't know what size those would be, but, you know, they're... I don't think Japan historically really had, like, a heavy machine gun. You know, they didn't have, historically, I believe, anything that, like, was a competitor to, like, the 50 cal. You know, the M2 Browning or um, the Soviet Dishkas. So, this is, like, light machine guns in turret mounts type thing for light AA. It's not even, you know, putting like Bofors or, you know, some sort of equivalent to a Bofor. So, yeah, we're sort of trying to figure out best way to get the weight to still allow for some future expansion because, you know, we got some extra fire control upgrades we're going to have down the road. Um, eventually we'll get radar and then, you know, I need to slap a seaplane hangar in there at some point. So let's do that. And then we realize, oh shit, we kind of broke the bank doing that. So I got to halt some stuff to try to get us cash flow positive again. And so, uh, yep, there we go. Finally 
uh, just kind of reevaluating things when it comes to potential allies in the future, maybe if this war drags on, because at this point I don't know if it's going to end this part or not. So we just kind of continue on. Hope for some extra budget, because we would love to also invade Chochin, China, if given the opportunity, because that would kick the French out of Southeast Asia entirely. And this is where I sort of ran into a, hmm, we could end the war now. We would gain disputed border areas and some colonies, so we would have a small amount of points to be able to take stuff or use for war reps if we chose that opportunity. And we could end this war now when we don't have much money in the bank. We don't have much in the way of a monthly balance income. And we already know we're going to lose uh, budget after the war because it's just how the game works. Every time a war ends, you lose a fair bit of your budget. Because everybody calms down. They say, okay, well, you were able to win the war with that budget. Um, you're going to have to win it the next one with a smaller budget. Um, unless, you know, your budget goes up in the meantime enough to warrant it. I think at this point I'm just kind of like, we don't really have much to lose at this point. Um... You know, once we take the French out, there's no other European power that really matters in Southeast Asia. I mean, technically Spain is there, but their stuff that they have here does not matter. The Philippines was the only important thing that they had, and they lost it so early in the game that it doesn't matter anymore. So I'm sort of trying to talk myself into continuing the war to finish kicking France out so that Next time we go to war with the European power in Asia, it's only the British, and the British don't really matter. They've lost basically the entirety of their naval basing here um, when we took Hong Kong in the previous war. And lo and behold, we get... Quality zero 16 inch guns, right? As I'm trying to design a brand new battle cruiser, or a, excuse me, a brand new dreadnought um, that has 16 inch guns. So we'll have to throw that back on the drawing board to refit those guns. I'm thinking at this time that we will be building that design. We go ahead and queue up invading Chochen, China, and we need to again try to balance the budget so we can actually afford the month or two, hopefully only a few months of uh, planning costs. We get another one, but this one is actually worse. This is basically a white piece. Why would I accept a white piece when I basically effectively just declined a victory for my side? And so I, I tell them no. Britain and Italy continue to fight, and Italy continues to lose, which is not surprising in the slightest, and oh, Germany's upset now, and looks like we might end up with a war with Germany, or, excuse me, with Germany joining in. We get a quick fight against the, uh, the French again. Um, I don't recall what they had in this engagement when it came to a fleet, but I don't think it was anywhere near what the game claims, and, you know, we run, we get a whole shit ton of fucking errors. So we have some ancient uh, Chioda class uh, light cruisers, you know, these are 1915 designs, um, or at least the current iterations of them. I, presumably they've gone through refits, so they're even older than that in reality. And I realized, oh yeah, Da Nang is the one that has the, uh, the airship uh, base. Uh, which, those are expensive, and they're not particularly useful in my opinion. Um, at some point, I do scrap the airbase, which frees up a boatload of money. Oh, and there's the Trudet class. Is it the exact same one as the one we had before? I don't know, but I'm hopeful it is. We try to go after it. Um, 
I'm just going to go ahead and say it. This battle is not an interesting one. Uh, nothing really happens. They are significantly faster than us. Um, and eventually night comes and basically nothing happens. Uh, they do sink a transport, I believe. Um, but they only end up sinking the one before the game ends. So, yeah. I think we do, well... I think we get a couple of shots in at one point, but I don't think we actually damage them, like, at all. I think they do at some point accidentally uh, turn around um, and stay that course just a little too long that they end up actually entering gun range. But I don't think we really do anything to them, generally speaking. So we might get a couple shots in, but no damage done. And unfortunately, our guys are, you know running into issues when it comes to actually maintaining full steam ahead. Which poses its own issues. At this point, I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm not going to be closing with them so we'll just try to hang around our transports and you know maybe we can sink them when they come in to spot them but mm, this is a bit of a double-edged sword because well not really a double-edged sword necessarily but it doesn't necessarily fully work out as i would like because we lack certain useful features like radar if we had radar at this time this would actually be a halfway decent plan uh but if we had radar we wouldn't really need to be doing this so much either so Bit of a cat 22 radar makes this plan easier but i don't really need to do this plan if i had radar so we try to sort of hang around the uh spot mark that we had ages back but mm, nothing really happens we can tell that there clearly must have engaged one of our guys because we're not able to go faster than fast when it comes to game speed And then we see Merchant 12 here just kind of dead in the water and then sink. So clearly they were like right here not too long ago. But where the hell did they go? Who knows? We don't go too far away, but eventually we just kind of give up the search and say, screw it, let's just sail back into Da Nang. No point staying out here for any longer than we have to. And so it ends up with a draw. It's technically, you know, we have a little bit more points, it's, but it's largely still a draw. And it's just because of at least one merchant survived on our side. They didn't manage to sink the two that they needed to. So Germany honors their alliance with uh, the U.S. and joins in. The Diet decides to say, okay, you'll get some more money. And then we tell them only the, only the Navy can win this war. New naval patrol craft, okay. Well, the Kawashima, I think it was, uh, is a bit better. New fire from Mitsubishi, but it's got worse range than the Nakajima that we currently have in development. So it's not really worth taking. In fact, in many ways, it's worse already. New torpedo bomber would be nice, so let's try to get better range. With the French unable to contest us, we launch our invasion of Chochin, China. And now we try to take advantage of our monthly balance, hopefully to get some money in the bank. Back, sorry about that. I had to go take care of something. I don't recall what I was talking about just now. Um, I think it might have been something about the budget. Now that uh, we're bringing in 4000 a month, we can maybe use this opportunity to actually try to build up a bit of a treasury. Okay, we take Choshin, China. Now at this point, uh, there's nothing we can do with this war. Because the French can't get to us, we can't really get to the French, the Americans can't get to us, and the Germans can't get to us. Nobody can get to anybody. So, um, yeah. Well, I mean, they can come in. They can't stay for long, though, because they have nowhere to, you know, 
refuel, resupply, etc., etc. So they, they can come in, they can be like, hey Japan, just passing through, don't mind us, please don't shoot us. We can obviously choose to ignore them when they say that, which is generally what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's, they can't really stay here and try to fight us prolonged. Because they just don't have any base capacity. Nobody does. Me, China, and Britain are the only ones that really have any base capacity in Southeast Asia now. And Burma's too far away to really have any fights break out um, in the Indian Ocean. Okay, and the Katori needs to be reworked because we now have quality zero 16-inch guns and... Don't have anything else that we really can do with it in terms of changes. So we throw it back in for another month to upgrade the guns on the design. And I don't know what the hell we're studying. I assume it's from people, you know, the survivors we picked up and whatnot. And how much is this to build again? I think it's like 4 the yeah, it's 4800 Oof, it's expensive. We already have tons of other stuff to spend money on, so we go ahead and try to get the uh, new sub hunters from two years ago out. Um, same with the mine sweepers. Try to get those out now that we have an opportunity, and also that our trade protection is getting a bit low for my liking. We're kind of straddling the border there. game keeps complaining about uh, an airbase, and I'm like, what airbase are you talking about? Um, and I really don't know what airbase it's talking about. Oh, it was uh, Cameron Bay, yeah. Just noticed that now. So yeah, Cameron Bay doesn't have any aircraft there, or at least it didn't. And there we go, we scrap the uh, the airship base because we don't want it, and that saves us a fair bit of money. Which is great, because we need it. So, some of our corvettes finish up. Hmm. Basically a white piece again, we tell them to piss off. And at this point, yeah, we're just kind of ticking through the turns, trying to end the war this part. Because at this point, they don't have an opportunity to fight us. They literally don't. Uh, there's a fight in Burma. We choose to ignore it because we don't have any ships there. And I think the penalty for declining is uh, actually not as bad as the penalty for accepting, but then not actually being able to fight. I think if I accepted it, they technically get the benefits of as if they actually fought the battle but if I decline then they don't get nearly as much VP okay so the Germans arrive in Southeast Asia they've got a fair bit of stuff I think I'm I think I read that wrong at first because I'm like those numbers don't quite add up and we see that the US has a massive massive fleet in uh Central Pacific oh no no this was the one that I was reading the numbers wrong I was like, that bar doesn't seem the right size for such a small fleet. And then I realized, oh, wait, never mind. I'm reading the German numbers while looking at the American bar. So we go ahead and, and turn. And I use it this turn or the next turn. We get a fight with the Germans at one point. Uh, okay, it's next turn. Oh, well, it's soon, at least. I don't recall exactly when it is, but it is soon. I do know we fight the uh, the Germans, and it's uh, it's not a big battle, but it is a fun one still. In many ways, in my opinion. Nope, nope not this turn either. When the hell is it? Might be this one now. Nope. We would have gotten a fight first before those things. So nope, we still don't get it. I 
don't recall what turn it is that we get that. Um, but yeah, we end up fighting a German uh, Dreadnought. In fact, I'm, I think it's literally just a German Dreadnought. I don't think it has any escort at all. I don't know what they were thinking when they accepted that engagement. Here we go. Yeah, this is it, finally. So we have the uh, Tsukuba, Kurama, and the Yashima and Kashima, both of our Yashima class, which are our uh, most recent, I believe, design that is in the field with the 14-inch guns. We spot them fairly quickly, and by them I mean it, because it's just the one ship. Oh no, no, it does, okay, it does have an escort. I completely forgot that it had an escort. I only recall the ship, the Dreadnought, the Lothrangan. Well, Lothrangan class, I actually don't recall if it is the Lothrangan itself off the top of my head right now. And I see they have 15 inch guns, and then I think I go on a tirade about how 15 inch guns is a weird caliber of gun. 14, 16, sure, but 15 just feels like a, we want something better than a 14, but we can't exactly build a 16. Which I just don't like. I don't know what it is. I think it's just because I'm I'm not used to many ships running around with 15 inch guns. So it just feels weird to me, the idea of a 15 inch gun. Yeah. Um as I mentioned before when we were looking at the uh what was it, the the Kako or whatever it was, the armored cruiser. Yeah, the Yashimas have the same type of gun configuration, one fore and two aft, and I'm not a fan of that design again. I'm really not. I hate it. It's it's a hideous design. It really is. Uh, but it gets the job done. Uh, one of our ships... Um, okay, yeah, it looks like it was the Yashima. I never could quite recall which one it was. Um, and I think I mentioned it next part, that, you know this engagement happens, but the Yashima manages to land a 14-inch hit on the Lothrangan. And that basically cuts its speed in half. Probably more than in half, but it's... We're more than easily capable of closing in on it now. And so we're able to just rain 14 and 12-inch gun hits in on it, uh, with secondaries trying to hit that V2 class. Not to be confused with the, the other V2 that comes later. Because I don't know what it is with German destroyer naming conventions. They are very lazy. They say, pick a letter and pick a number. And that'll be the name of the design. I really don't like the that naming convention for the Germans. Um, but yeah, so we just start pouring it's down on the Lothrangan, and it's not having a fun time. It really isn't. Um, I don't recall if the Lothrangan had uh, submerged torpedoes um, when we were looking at it before. I don't think it did. Obviously, we lose sight of it because dusk comes. So we, we try to find it again. There we go. And I think this is where I, I'm like, wait, does it have torpedoes? I kind of got to know that, and then I realize, okay, nope, it doesn't. Good. Uh, because I don't want the Yashima and the Kashima to get torpedoed. That would suck. So try to have the Satsuki launch a torpedo run on it. And we land two hits. And then two more there. Get the uh, Shikinami to go ahead and fire some more. Land two more hits in on it. We may have the Yashima and Kashima just kind of focus on, well, yeah, we just kind of have everybody turn south to try to finish it off. Uh, with the destroyers that just launched the torpedo run, continuing on, trying to hunt down the, the V2. But we kind of have issues because it's such a small ship, you know, it's a destroyer. So it's it's not exactly big. So we have a bit of a hard time keeping eyes on it. 
I end up with a change of plans and just say, hey, you know what? The Lothringen's dead in the water. It's taken six torpedoes. We can ignore that. And let's just focus on the destroyer. And there we go. Let me take a look at this. And um, yeah, it was actually the Lothringen itself. I think the Lothringen might have been the only design of the Lothringen class. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised if that is, if this is the case here. But yeah, they they do not have a fun time. Yeah, the Yashima 14-inch hit penetrated the deck extended and disabled pa electric power. Yeah. And that just significantly decreased their speed. I don't know how much it decreased their speed because the game doesn't provide me with that information. All I know is that, yeah, they were basically dead as a result of that. And I, yeah, I think I'm sort of complaining about, you know, ah, I don't know what the max speed was for this thing. And then, you know, what the speed went down to after it took that hit. And, you know, that was information that I, I would love to have had. Is it particularly useful? Not really, but I still would have liked to have had it. And so, yeah, at this point, you know, I don't think we fight any more battles. And we're just kind of clicking through. And just being like, come on, hurry up. Let's end the war. There's like four more minutes before my timer goes off. And I just want to get this over with. Okay, no, there was another Lothrangen. It's the Roth class, or however it's pronounced, because it's German. So it's probably not pronounced as Roth. I don't know all of the ins and outs of Germans. I know, you know, a couple of uh, how they uh, put stuff in. Or, you know, how they spell some stuff and how those get pronounced, but I don't know for all of it. Die gives us some more money. Um, revolutionaries uh, for the U.S. And we're like, yeah, let's let's get this out. Let's finish this. If also we can have a revolution happen in the U.S., that helps a lot more in terms of getting war reps. And we continue trying to build our Miyoko class heavy cruisers much better than our current heavy cruisers, I believe. They're a bit bigger. Well, I say they're much better. I really don't know if they actually are much better. I don't recall what the Miyoko design looks like. Another white piece offer from the enemies. We tell them to piss off because why would I accept a white piece at this point? We've taken everything we wanted off of them. I mean, it's not strictly true. We could technically have continued on. Get some better invasion capabilities, which is always nice. And yeah, I, I really don't actually have anything else to say at this point for the most part, because we're just kind of clicking through the turns and being annoyed that they're not giving us peace as quickly as I would like. I think I end up throwing, yeah, I end up throwing some minesweepers onto trade protection on accident because I'm not paying attention. Strikes and anti-war demonstrations in the U.S. It's not like the U.S. has done anything in this war. Um, shipyard is like, hey, we can build you a Zuyo for in 18 months at 10% discount. We tell them, no, we don't got the money for that. We get catapults, which will be helpful for our new dreadnought design, assuming we were to ever build it. Spoiler alert, we don't. We end up designing some new stuff next part, which is in many ways very similar. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm probably just going to sort of shut up here at this point because there's really nothing else for me to say. My microphone audio for this part was basically me just being like, come on, hurry up, let, let's end this, this damn war. It's, you don't get, you guys don't have anything to fight. You know, I'm not going to the Indian Ocean to fight you because I don't have much in the way of base capacity there. And you have zero base capacity in the two regions of the, um, you know, where I'm actually willing to base my, my navy. So just come on, let's end this. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to probably mute my mic here, basically.
Um, if something comes up that I actually want to talk about, I'll be back, but I don't think that happens at all. And we just kind of keep going until, God, like another 20 minutes waiting for them to finally, finally, finally accept peace. Uh, Kawanishi presents a new torpedo bomber that's worse than our newest torpedo bomber and is not that much better than our old torpedo bomber. It's got less range is the main thing for me because range is important. I want my, you know, planes to have decent range. It's a very important thing for me. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and shut up here. And yeah, I don't think I'll be back, honestly, because there's just nothing else for me to really say this part. So I'll see you all next time. Until then, goodbye. I don't mention it very often, but I do want to, you know. Um, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Share the videos. Things like that is always appreciated. Uh, but I'll see you all next time. Until then, goodbye and farewell.